today we're going to be making a butternut squash soup. Butternut squash are available pretty much year round so you can make this anytime. Certainly good in the cooler months but it's also very refreshing in the summer. The first thing we're going to do is prepare the squash. So you see we already have a couple here. I've got one big one and then I've got two small ones because I couldn't find another big one. Um, so the first thing you want to do is cut off this little knob right here. This makes it a little easier. Cut that straight down. And then we're going to cut this in half. All right. And as you can see, there's some seeds in there that we're going to take out. Now, some people like to save the seeds and roast them. I'm not that adventurous, so uh, I'm not going to be doing that. So I'm going to take the seeds out, and then we're going to put a little oil and salt and pepper on them, and then roast them in a preheated 375 degree oven. So we scoop the seeds out. We're going to brush the side, including the um, cavity, with some oil. Use a vegetable oil, olive oil, whatever you like. And we're going to salt and pepper, especially in the cavity. And then we're going to put them on a sheet pan. I cover my sheet pans with aluminum foil, makes the cleanup a little easier. We're going to put it face down. And we're going to roast these for about 50 minutes in a degree oven. So we're going to put those in. So our butternut squash have been in the oven for about 50 minutes. We're going to turn them over and let them cool. See how steaming they are? So you cook them upside down so they kind of steam as well as bake on the cookie sheet. So um, while we let these cool, because we're not going to try to uh, take them out of the skin while they're this hot, we're going to cook our aromatics, which will be um, some ginger, onion, garlic, and a little brown sugar and a cinnamon stick. So we'll put that together, and then when this cools, we'll take out the skin and make that part of our soup. So our squash have cooled significantly. They can be touched without burning yourself. So now we're going to put our aromatics into the pan. This is one chopped onion. And the pieces are kind of big. It doesn't matter how big they are because we're going to use a blender to um, put everything together. So we're just trying to get a little heat on them and then sweat a little bit. This is about three or four cloves of garlic chopped. Again, doesn't matter because how big they are. This is a couple tablespoons of chopped ginger. It's all going in. A cinnamon stick. Throw that in. And this is a tablespoon of brown sugar. Put that in. So, screw this. And let it get a little color. And once we do this, we're going to put the squash in. And finish cooking the dish. All right, so we have taken most of the uh, squash out of the skin, and all you want to do is just scrape and take it out of the skin, just like that, very simple. And one of the reasons you want it to cool is because if I tried to do this when it was hot, it would burn my hands. All right, so we're going to place this into the um, pot. And again, pieces don't matter because they will cook down or break them up a little bit. So the one thing that I do want to mention, don't forget that there's a cinnamon stick in here before you use the blender. Make sure you get that cinnamon stick out. You're not going to use any cream in this. It will get nice and creamy on its own with the blender. The one thing we're going to add is some warm stock. Uh, this is homemade. I'm just going to add that right in. And bring it to a boil and stir it around. Again, keeping an eye on wherever the 
cinnamon stick happens to be. We're going to break up these pieces. Add a little salt and pepper. And as soon as this comes to a boil, we're going to let it go for about 10 minutes. I'm going to simmer and then get the cinnamon stick out and use our blender. All right, we've been simmering for about 10 minutes and my tips, number one, take out the cinnamon stick. I one time forgot and crunched it all up and it stays crunchy. So we definitely want to get rid of that. The second thing is you should really use an immersion blender. If you don't have an immersion blender, you can use a regular blender, um, but you have to let the soup cool before you start putting a hot soup in a blender. So this is much easier. So when you're using an immersion blender, you want to make sure that the tip points away from you, not towards you, because sometimes soup can fly. So we're going to turn it on. And just go around, and this will get nice and creamy. All right, we're just about finished here. See how nice and creamy that is? Very smooth. And to serve, very simple. I'm just going to put it in a bowl. I'm going to turn it off. Put it in a bowl here. A nice soup bowl. And I'm going to top it. I'm going to top with a little bit of chopped parsley. There you go. This is uh, butternut squash soup. It's a pretty easy dish. Not a lot of ingredients. Only thing that takes a long time is cooking the squash in the oven. So I hope you enjoyed this. Appreciate everybody who subscribes to our YouTube channel, those who read our blog and our su subscribers there on Facebook, Instagram, on Pinterest, Twitter. Really do appreciate the support. So. Thanks again for everybody taking the time to watch what we're doing here. See you next time. Thanks for watching.